Hello, how's it going? This is Tesla guy again. Uh, talking about a crossover here. Just switching from Tesla to audio. Now, I've always wondered how to make one of these, but I figured it out quite a while ago. I was just going to try and clear up some things for someone else that doesn't know how. Not to cause any offense. Now, this is known as a low-pass LC filter. Meaning it has a L1, which is an inductor, just like this one. But actually I'm using this inductor here. And then a capacitor. The capacitor is optional, so I'll put OP beside that. It just allows it to have a better current drive and it allows it to not distort as much because it allows some of the current to be stiffened a little bit. Now, your inductor here is a must. If you don't have these, you're going to do nothing but allow it just to have a full range to this woofer. This is a 8 inch Kenwood woofer, very nice. It's a vintage one, inverted surround. Ooh, ah, very nice speaker. Anyways, let's go back to this kind of string. Now, this is a simple schematic. This is exactly what it would look like if you look it up. Now, there's some other kinds you can do where it has two of these in parallel. So, it's got another coil in series and another cap here, and then it goes out. Now, this is a low pass. Now, um, I'll talk about high pass in just a minute. Low pass means it only allows low frequencies through because copper makes a magnetic field around itself when you put an electrical current through it. That means this magnetic field will attenuate the high frequencies. But at the same time, when the AC sine wave goes from high to low to high to low, now this right here. Sorry, that's not a straight line, it's neutral. This is where it's doing nothing at all. Now, that magnetic field is allowed to collapse, but the one rule, there's a main rule for inductors and capacitors, the same for both of these. Voltage and current cannot change instantaneously across either one, meaning it will attenuate different frequencies. And that is why we use them in audio systems. Now, this is passive. Only thing I don't like about passive is it eats up power. Now, like, this for a subwoofer amplifier this here I don't know if you can read that it says frequency FRQ you can't read it because it won't daggum focus that is active meaning it acts as a small pre-amplifier but we're not talking about the, that today I will be making one of those for an amplifier for a friend anyways here's a small crossover I've made it just uses the capacitor and an inductor now there's three wires if you just want to be simple your coil, your inductor, L1 and C1, these two wires on the outside are the inputs, and then these two wires across the capacitor is your output, just like here. So these wires right here, these two connections are just for the inductor. So that will be the input. The inductor is in series, just like that. The capacitor is in parallel with the voltage, but it's after the inductor. Otherwise, you're not going to do anything, like I said. It just won't work as well. Now, I'll do a small demonstration of how this works with this sub. Um, now, if you reverse this and you do this, just a minute. You reverse it, it changes it into a high pass. Oops, sorry about that. That kind of messed up. This is your common. Okay. This here will be your output. Now, this is completely backwards. As you can tell, the capacitor is not here. So this makes it to where it only allows high frequencies through. Now, the this right now is optional. You don't have to have the inductor. It just works better. Just like I have option, that's why I have opted to use the capacitor in this. It makes it sound much better. It's very nice. Plus, it looks cool. <laughs> yeah. But normally, just like these shelf speakers I made, um... I made it to where it's all inside, so you don't have to see it, don't have to worry about wires breaking, and it's got little plug-ins, you just plug it in like an ATX power supply. It is extremely simple. Now, it's time to do a small demonstration of how this thing sounds. So, I'm using a 100 watt SSL 2 channel amplifier. Now, I have set their internal crossover to um, full range. I don't want it set to high pass or low pass. So these are the outputs. Now you want to kind of 
you want to be sure that you hook it up properly, otherwise it just won't sound the same. So, let me hook this up real quick. Hooked up. The inductor is hooked to the hot, or the positive. Then the negative is hooked to the negative of the capacitor, because it's all in parallel in series. Now, the legs of the capacitors is your output. So, I will hook the positive of the output of the capacitor to the positive of the speaker for this woofer here. And then the negative will go to the ground of the whole entire thing. That's why it's called COM, because it's common. Okay, now, first I will let you hear full range speaker sound. And you'll notice that it sounds really good, because this is a really good amplifier. Just a minute, sorry I had to put you down. Okay, now, for in case you want to know, that I do not own this song. It's just, uh... Wiz Khalifa, see you again. So, before any of you people say, don't use that sign, it's not yours, just deal with it. It's, just talk to me about it, don't make a fuss. Alright. This is full range. Yeah, we came a long way. Where we Steal the pleasure. You know, we started. I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. I'll tell you. When I see you So it sounds really good that way, doesn't it? Now, I will hook it in to where it's using the crossover. So, just... Uh, the crossover is now hooked up. You hear how it sounds much, much different? Much lower frequency. The volume is not down. I just turned it down to prevent it from distorting, because this is a very high-power crossover. It actually amplifies the bass. But as you can tell, it's much lower frequency. If I had my oscilloscope out, I'd let you actually look at the actual frequency, but I don't have it out right now. I have to pull it out and all that crap is pain, but... Now, I'm going to reverse it. We're going to hook it in like this, to where you're using the cap here, and then the inductor. You'll notice that it sounds much, much higher frequency, so just a minute. Okay, now listen close. You'll notice a very, very high frequency. Much different. Almost all the bass is gone. The speaker's barely moving at all. Now, if you're going to use a small speaker like this, that would be perfect. Like tweeters. Or like the speaker that's up here. Now, this is the woofer, so it gets low frequencies. Now, if you're going to make a very high-powered audio system, I recommend using crossovers. Because when you give it a full range, what you're trying to do, I... Don't take full credit for this, but I read a, or saw a video, and it made it really simple. Okay, so we'll say that this is 60 hertz. Okay? Now, when you try and put your high frequencies through, everything is trying to overlay. So the speaker, when it's supposed to go up and down, or back and forth, I mean, sorry, it's not sitting up. When it tries to go back, that high frequency is traveling faster than the bass note is traveling. So, in turn, it goes wham, and it pushes it forward, making a distortion where it's not supposed to be. So you want to use a crossover. This is more like known as a transformer because it's got two coils. You can do the exact same thing here, but be careful with these. These things really amplify the bass. I figured that out by accident, and that's what I'm using in those. Anyways, these, you don't use the second coil. You leave it dangling. I call it a dangling coil because it's not hooked or, or in C, not connected. Now, you only hook one coil in. It will make massive amounts of bass. But you don't want it to be up that high because it will distort your speaker because it amplifies it a lot. So, here's the full range. Here's the high pass. And... Here is your full range speaker again. Notice how there's a whole lot more bass. And now, I'll hook it to the low pass side. So, thank you for watching. Subscribe, like, post comments if you don't know. Something, if you want to ask a question, feel free. Thank you for watching, and have a good one.